Well, I am coming at you midweek this time. I've been doing a lot of these near the end of the week when I come to visit the chapel and make our church bulletin copies for Sunday morning. But today it's on a Wednesday and we have a planned off week for our Bible study night. So here I am. And I've been thinking a lot about the fact that of the bunches of people that follow our church page, I know a lot of you don't attend worship somewhere. And many do. There's a lot of folks that follow our page that are friends of ours from other churches or through the Emmaus community. And then, of course, there are those that are we would call our church family here at Drennan that do attend on a weekly or almost weekly basis. But I want to speak to you all that that might not be in a church home and that for Easter, that I like to call Resurrection Sunday here in just a couple of weeks, this might be a time that you think about it. April 9th is Easter. You know, we get our little kids, our grandkids, or our kids, the little suits. The, the boys have the little vest and the matching tie, and the girls have the lovely frocks and their little shoes, and they gather their Easter egg baskets, and they bring them, and they, at our place, and I'm looking outside right now through our windows, we see where the cemetery is, and we hide the eggs and have a big time, and there's a lesson for the children, but I want to get you all into worship regularly in a house of the Lord, maybe this one, maybe another one if they preach this book, where you like to go, where you live, then go to that church for sure. But be part of ours. I'm going to share with you a story right now from John chapter 4. I've been in John a lot lately, and I'll be teaching from John this Easter season, but this one's way back in the beginning of John. It's about a lady who didn't know the Lord, but she met the Lord, and he told her everything about herself. And with that, she became convinced that he was the Messiah. And I say that to you all as a story today because maybe you haven't felt like you have fit into a church. Maybe you feel like you're unworthy of a church. Maybe you feel like the, the church is, in fact, unworthy of you because of the way that they've acted in the past, the people or the organization, and it's just not been a good feel for you. Well, this story is about a woman who found out that Jesus, he handles it right. I'm going to read from John chapter 4. It says, Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, John the Baptist. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. So just imagine they're going through kind of a sketchy area for Jewish men to go through, and it's high noon. It's hotter than you'd want to be. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't be thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, 
Jesus replied, Believe me, the time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is Spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the Spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he'll explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Now, I share this story because this lady is one that, for all intents and purposes, is living her life on the wrong side of the tracks in the face of the people because no one would want to go gather water at the noon time of the day when it's, the sun is the highest, it's the hottest it'll be. She has to do that because she is basically an outcast. She's been married five times, and now the man she's with this time, she's not even married to. In the eyes of Jewish society back then, she's not doing great. And she is the one that Jesus is entrusting this gospel to be spread in this place that, as she said, they don't even really associate with Jewish folks. So she's shocked that, that this is Jesus, as he tells her that, shocked that they're here and the disciples are not expecting anything like this to happen at that time. And I say that to you all because if you're a person who is not expecting to experience Jesus in a church because you've been in a church and you sure didn't experience Jesus there. You might have experienced something else that was the opposite of Jesus, or you might have experienced an unloving spirit, or you might have experienced shame. Jesus is showing in this story right here is that he is love. He is truth. He is light. He is life. Don't base your opinion of Christianity on me or on anybody else or on a church, even this beautiful Civil War chapel where I'm sitting right now. Base it on Jesus. These are his words in this book. And the lady that he ran into, a woman that many wouldn't call a lady right then, he entrusted this gospel to her. That could be you. A man or a woman or a boy or girl who feels left out, who feels like they've let their family down or let Jesus down or that they don't fit in a church, Jesus is saying, no, this, this place is for you. I am for you. This gospel is for you. Come see us here. You see where I am right now? I love this place. My family has been coming here for just short of 14 years. Easter's coming. I like to call it Resurrection Sunday because... Jesus was resurrected on that day. And it could be that your heart is going to be resurrected. It could be that your life is resurrected. Think about it. Pray about it. Give it a shot. You've got two weeks till Easter, April 9th. Get yourself in a chapel that studies the Bible and worships the Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ.